so I am at a local crematory, as promised. Um, I will hopefully not give you motion sickness today while I'm giving you a tour, um, since I'm holding the camera and walking us around. So I'm gonna just kind of walk you through uh, when somebody, an individual deceased arrives here, kind of what the process is that they go through uh, while they're here. So um, let me just turn this camera a little bit. Um, so when you get here to the crematory, or a, a body would get here to the crematory, um, this device is used to um, bring the container that they are in, so either a casket or a box um, is put on this device just to be wheeled around. It goes up and it goes down um, because there's different racks, as you can see behind, that they may be placed on um, until it is their turn to be cremated. And then there's also, I'm gonna walk you over, this is a large uh, cooler unit that holds multiple um, sets of remains. So if an individual uh, needs to be kept in cold storage before their paperwork is received, then uh, they can be kept there uh, so that they do not um, decompose more and that they are kept locked up and safe. So um, this box, if you can see, is kind of one of the basic containers required by a crematory. It's got a hard rigid bottom. This piece um, opens up to be a lid to cover the deceased and that way they can be moved around and handled properly by all the staff that needs to be involved. Woo. Here I am back. So when an individual gets to the crematory, all the paperwork um, is taken in and they are given one of these little tags. This metal does not melt in the crematory process and so it stays with the individual the whole time. It stays with those remains and uh, as they're processed and then as they're given back to the family, this little disc is always with them and it has a number on it that corresponds to all their paperwork that is kept here on file. So as I've talked about, in case um, you know remains are found in an old house or in case you know if there's a tornado or something and remains are pulled out of a home and discarded somewhere and you find this box of cremated remains that disc that is inside with them will have a crematory name and a crematory number and can be linked back to who they are um, and this happens more than you know I saw a Facebook post um, within the last year and that somebody was saying hey we moved into a new house we found this set of cremated remains. Can someone help us find them? And it was one of those share it across the world type of things um, because they were trying to find, and it was simple, just call that crematory and they will tell you who those individual, who that individual is. So now um, in order for the cremation to take place, a signed death certificate um, and certified death certificate has to be on file and has to be done for that individual and then a, it's called a burial transit and crematory permit. So it's used as a burial transit permit. So to bury someone, that permit also has to be signed um, by the funeral director. And then for cremation, it has to be signed by the funeral director and the medical examiner in the county that the person died in. This is just to make sure, since cremation can't be reversed, that nothing hinky is going on, everything is up to par, and that that process can take place. So that medical examiner is the last um, person that can sign off on all of it. So now I'm going to go over to um, the retort and kind of give you a tour of what that looks like. And that's the machine that the cremation takes place in. All right, so here is a retort. Um, this cremation or this crematory has three retorts. Um, really nice setup here, really clean, really um, 
just really top notch. I'm really impressed by this place. This is my first time at this location and it's, it's pretty awesome. So, a lot of controls, as you can see. Um, a lot to know in order to run one of these large machines. These can burn up to over 4,000 degrees. Michigan minimum is that they have to run at 1,600 degrees. Other states like Florida has a 2,000 degree minimum. So every state is a little different. So this is the inside um, of the retort. The walls are just concrete. The base is concrete as well. You can see it's kind of pitted from the burning and um, these are walls are redone ever so often. These this in this retort, these walls were redone just in the last year. So they make them thicker, reinforce them, make sure that they're sturdy. Um, one thing that does damage the inside of this, so we've talked about how pacemakers must be removed before a person is cremated, but it still all too frequently happens that they're not and they do explode about 20, 30 minutes into the cremation process. Um, you know, whoever's running the machine at the time from the other room will hear a, a a big explosion kind of like you're standing next to a 12 gauge shotgun almost um, and that will implode into the side and kind of pit out the sides of the retort so you can see at the back there is a spot where there's a large burn that can go on debated turning that on it looks kind of legitimately like a jet engine being turned on but I didn't want to have too much shock and awe today and then in the ceiling here is the um, spot where the main kind of burner that will be right over the center, right over the heart of the individual um, during the process. So that's kind of the main heat source that will um, kind of burn the person down um, into the cremated remains. Now this, uh, the retort is still quite warm um, and it was turned off last night. Um, they had turned this one off and left it off so that I could have one to show you guys um, for during the process. So um, once the cremation process is finished inside the retort, they will use, walking over to some tools, um, these tools. So there's some brooms and some scrapers and things like that that they use to sweep out the inside of the retort to get all the cremated remains pulled out um, to be collected. So they are all then brushed out and go down into this. It's just kind of like a big funnel sort of thing. And then this little box is under there and is filled and then pulled out. So then they take that box of large bone pieces and some ash and they bring it over to this area. So typically they will have all the cremated remains in one of these trays. This is a magnet. As you can see there's some surgical implants and staples and things that they have actually pulled out um, from cremated remains previously and so this um, magnet is just run over the cremated remains. They pull those items out um, and then they're discarded of at some point. And then they have those cremated remains are then put into this unit. It's called a pulverizer or, you know, different people call it different things. Um, but it, it literally looks like a large blender. 
I hate to say, um, and it just breaks down the cremated remains to a finer, um, coarser uh, com component um, to be returned to the family. So then that is all um, put into a, like a plastic bag. So you're into a plastic bag. And then this is put into one of these black temporary containers. And then this is given to the family. Um, so as you can see, it's not very large, but it's a decent size. And a lot of times these are pretty full. Um, TNC kind of compared to my hand, um, but they are, Hold on, trying to reverse the camera again. There we go. Um, it's pretty full. But as of right now, they have two individuals that are being cremated. Um, not going to see any of that. Um, not going to show actual cremated remains for respect of those people that have been cremated. Um, but that's kind of the process. It's it's decently simple um, takes a couple hours to happen so we talked about before I would say about two hours um, to from start to finish there's a cooling process and um, things like that and it all depends on also the size of the individual talked in a previous uh, video about larger individuals needing uh, longer much longer to be cremated uh, the gentleman that runs the crematory here was telling me that for every 50 pounds of fat on an individual acts as 12 gallons of gasoline. So imagine what a little bit of gasoline does to a fire. So if you have a 400, 500 pound person that you're cremating, that's a lot of gasoline that you have to control as it's burning down. So some of these retorts, um, are shaped a little bit differently and they're easier to handle larger individuals in them because of the way the lip is and so as the body's burning down and um, that fat kind of liquefies a little before it's burned off it can run out of the machine so just earlier this week um, they had a gentleman and some of his the, the fat kind of ran out and so they get a grease fire so he had to use the fire extinguisher had to put that out in the middle of the crematory here so there is definite dangers the you know if if that pacemaker doesn't explode during the process but as they're removing the cremated remains and that pacemaker hasn't once they touch it it may explode and that has killed um, people who work at crematories before because it explodes in their face as they're removing the cremated remains so there's definitely some dangers of the individuals that are working here and, and taking care of uh, your loved ones. Um, there is also uh, opportunity, which a lot of people don't know, is that you can come to a crematory to witness and view your loved one being placed into the retort um, and you can stay during the whole process. So if you are concerned about you know, is that really my mom or dad? Is that their cremated remains? You can come, you can sit, you can watch the whole thing. When they're taken out, you can take them home. Um, so you can be there during the whole process. Um, and to some people that's really encouraging and that's really um, helps kind of settle any fears or any anxiety they may have about it. Uh, some crematories do charge for it because they have to schedule that in and they have to um, make sure kind of other business is not going on at the same time and so they do charge to, to you know to um, have that scheduled into their day which is totally reasonable as you can see at this uh, crematory they've got um, a nice viewing window so you can sit on the other side because it is kind of loud in this room if you can't tell I'm I feel like I'm yelling um, but sitting over in the office area, it's very quiet. So, um, 
Yeah, give you another little peek around the place. So this middle retort, um, you can see there's a little difference. This middle one is the one that's made for larger individuals. The door is, is bigger, top to bottom. Um, just allows to place heavier individuals in a little bit easier. So any questions? Figured maybe I'd have a couple comments during the tour that maybe people had some questions while I was here. Um, trying to think of a few other items that they had told me when I got here to share, but I think I kind of covered most of them. So, oh, when, yes, I, I did tell me a fascinating fact, and it kind of goes back to the original um, question that I was asked about, like, different colors of um, cremated remains and how someone wondered if they were really their, you know, they have their grandma and they have their mom or, or something like that, and the cremated remains look very different, and they wondered why that might be. Um, and I found out today, which I'd never heard and never knew, but is quite factual, that your lifestyle actually dictates kind of what color the cremated remains are. Um, a darker, grayer cremated remain is going to be someone who led a harder lifestyle. Maybe a heavy smoker, heavy drinker, um, just, you know, didn't take care of their body as well. Uh, whiter, cleaner cremated remains are typically going to be someone who didn't smoke, didn't drink, lived a really healthy, good lifestyle. Um, very interesting, very fascinating. So I want to go and read more and look into more of why that is and, and why that happens and where that comes from. So it's really fascinating to me. But, um, yeah. So hopefully this was a good little on-site tour. Um, next week I'm going to be doing a prep room tour and show you everything around a prep room and kind of um, what we do during embalming and, and walk you through all of that. So uh, any question, thank you Hoda, I appreciate that. Uh, any questions, just let me know. Um, I can do follow up for you. And any questions about the prep room, let me know for next week. Thanks guys.